Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bullet Club's Hangman Adam Page, and you're listening to Morgan Richards' Interviews. Hey, I'm Morgan Richards from Radio Cardiff, and I'm very pleased to say that I'm joined live on the phone now by a man who's earned himself a rite of passage in the world of professional wrestling. Here's, of course, the Hangman, Mr. Adam Page. What's going on? How are you? Hey, Adam, you okay? I'm great. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. How's things? Oh, uh, man, they're good. Um, you know, I finally got some sleep. Uh, spent, you know, a week in Japan. And, you know, when you do that, your 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 senses get all mixed up. So I, I probably slept an hour and a half every night uh, and, and just got home late last night. So I've, I've gotten some sleep at this point and leave tomorrow for uh, coming your way. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks for taking time out to speak with us ahead of the Ring of Honor War of the Worlds UK Tour this weekend. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, Adam, it's safe to say it's been quite a whirlwind year for yourself personally, ever since joining the hottest fraction in wrestling, the Bullet Club, and continuing to dominate the likes of Ring of Honor and New Japan. Looking back at the last 12 months, just how sweet has it been not only becoming a good brother, but having that extra demand worldwide and working in a lot of new territories like Japan and so on for yourself? It's uh, it's been incredible, man. Um, you know, Bullet Club kind of opened the door to Japan for me, you know, and I had never really been out of the country, essentially, other than uh, like Toronto. So, you know, to get to go across halfway across the world to work for the, you know, one of the best wrestling companies on the planet uh, was great. Um, and now I'm getting to go to, you know, going over to the UK uh, this weekend. So that's been awesome, man. I've been able to be a part of um a lot of the you know just the best thing in wrestling right now to me it feels like is the bullet club um and to be a part of that you know to be a part of that history is is great you know and i'll, I'll know that i can look back on this and know that uh, man we were uh we we're kind of the hottest thing going at the time hmm. yeah and as you really mentioned the bullet club has really been seen as the hottest thing in wrestling for quite some time now everywhere you go every promotion somebody is wearing some form of Bullet Club merch. Is it quite surreal at times seeing just how much of an impact you've all made as a group and turning this into almost a wrestling pop culture movement really off your own backs? Yeah, man, it's it's insane. Um, and, you know, it's not sometimes you go out and, and there's somebody wearing a Bullet Club, mm. something. It's, uh, it's most everybody. Um, and it's weird. We'll go out and, you know, um, we'll look at the crowd or whatever before we go out or after we go out or whatever it is. And, you know, it's, it's always, yeah, it was maybe like 60% Bullet Club shirts or maybe 70 or 80. You know, it's something like that. Um, and that's, you know, insane. Uh, and that's not just, you know, these Ring of Honor shows or the New Japan shows. It's, it's literally shows anywhere, shows we aren't on and have never been a part of. Um, it's everywhere. And, uh, you know, to be a part of that is, is absolutely insane. It's, it's mind boggling. It's hard to wrap your head around. And for a lot of people, you've always been labeled this up and coming perspective, but recently you've really escalated and transformed yourself as a performer, coming into your whole hangman persona. It gets quite dark and intense at times, but do you feel you've been able to come into your own and express yourself a bit more, everything adopting these characteristics? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, um, working with guys in the Bullet Club has opened me up. You know, opened me up a lot. Um, I've got a bit of a shell. You know, um, I'm a kind of a quiet, a little bit of a, a lone wolf type of a person, I guess. Um, but working with these guys has opened me up a lot. Um, and you know, getting to be you know who I am uh, has opened me up in the ring a lot. And I, I feel like you know made me a lot more comfortable with with who I am, I guess. You know, I'm not sure. It's it's hard to put a finger on what it is. Um, but when you're working with a lot of the same guys, a lot, you know, a lot of the time you get closer. Um, and the the closer you get, you know, the more the more fun you have together, and you know, the more you enjoy stuff. And that shows. You know, the ten man tags we had this weekend over in uh, New Japan. I mean, with <laughs> with me and Cody, the Bucks. Um, one of them had Chase Owens, and one of them was Fale. I mean, we've just been spending so much time and doing so much stuff together that. We were just, I mean, just laughing the whole time, having having a ball, um, and I think that shows. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention is, of course, before coming into this hectic schedule you have so regularly now, 
You supported yourself in your career by actually being a school teacher for quite some time. Uh, I'm guessing you used to have to phone in for a lot of sick days when things started getting a bit crazy. Talk us through that time of really transforming and the transition from that to full time now. Well, um, you know, I, I finished college um, and moved back home, and uh, wrestling was not a full time job for me at that point, so I had to mm-hmm. do something. Uh, so, you know, I found a teaching job back home, uh, and that was cool. I taught there for five years. Uh, you know, I loved it, um, and it's something that maybe I'll go back to one day when all this is over. Um, and I actually almost look forward to that in some respects. Um, but, you know, those last couple of years of teaching, I was taking sick days left and right. Uh, and, and, and I know my, my, last, my last year there, you know, I had a year's worth of sick days and then probably half a year's worth of sick days that I had rolled over from previous years. Uh, and I used literally every single one of them up through the year. I was starting to panic and figure out what I was going to have to do because I didn't have any more days left. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. And, like, all my students knew. You know, it was a really small town. They could not know. So they knew, uh, they knew where I was when I was sick on Friday. Um, <laughs> They knew exactly where I was. <laughs> They'd go home and watch it. Um, but that was cool. And, you know, when I, I kind of joined Bullet Club and, you know, knew I was going to be going to Japan, you know, you can't fake sick for a Japan trip that's two or three weeks. Um, and I was able to financially support myself more. You know, it was, it was taking a bit of a risk um, because, you know, I was under a deal that, you know, still had six months or more left, you know, at that time. And, um it was taking a risk and, and a gamble and knowing that, hey, when these six months are up, I'll be able to, you know, hopefully um, support myself a little better. And, you know, that's what I'm doing now. So um, that paid off. Yeah, well, great to hear. And uh, a lot of wrestlers tend to talk about their inspirations, dream matches and what they've learned on the road. With hitting a lot more territories as of late and traveling with your good brothers right now in the Young Bucks, Omega, Cody, and Skirtle, what's some of the newer things you've learned and experienced in your time recently? Um, man, it's hard to say. Um, I think one thing has been working with these guys. Um, you know, I, I used to get, you know, really worked up about, you know, this or that, nerves and things like that. But, you know, I, I've learned to just kind of let go watching how these guys do stuff. Um, just total pros have been doing it for years and years, you know, much longer than I have a lot of them. Um, so I've been able to, you know, let go a lot, you know, about that worry and uh, just go with the flow. And I mean, it, it, it creates a better product, I think. Um, and I think it shows in some of my work. Um, and certainly there are just tons of little things that I'm, I'm learning as well. And Adam, just a couple more very quick things before you go. Uh, of course, you've got extremely busy schedule lined up coming to the UK now this weekend and just continuing the madness with the Bullet Club and everything in between. But what does the future really hold now for you, the Hangman Page and the Bullet Club coming up? Well, uh, we've got a heck of a weekend here. Um, and I think, you know, all the matches will be great. But I think of note, uh, if you want to talk about what's next, of note is that last show there in Edinburgh um, where me and uh, the Young Bucks, collectively known as the Hung Bucks, uh, we challenged for the Ring of Honor six-man titles. Um, you know, I, I respect Dalton Castle. I think he's great. Um, uh, but him and those boys don't have a chance. Um, so those six man titles in my mind are what's next for us. Um, Skrull is gunning back for his television championship. And if he doesn't get it, I'd like to imagine that, uh, I'd be another one in line. Um, and you know, we'll just see where we go from there. Okay. Well, my next question was going to be a lot of fans of wanting to see some sort of title or championship gold hanging from your waist. And it sounds that really is an ultimate goal for you personally going forward. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, You know, it hasn't always been. Um, At at different points in my career, I've had different goals and and championship gold wasn't necessarily one of the ones at the top. Uh, But for me right now, it is, um, you know, I've been a part of Ring of Honor for three or three or more years now. Um, and I haven't, you know, held a title and I've only had three or four title shots. Some guys have more shots than that in the year. Um, so, you know, they're few and far between and this is the next one on the line and I'll be damned if I'm going to let this one slip away. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, that's about it. Cheers, Adam, for taking time out to speak to me. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, best luck with everything now and hopefully I'll catch with you again very soon. All right, man. Take it easy.